All right, guys, I think we can begin now. Uh, let me know when I'm visible to you. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Kajal and Nikita. Nikita, are you, uh, will you be able to speak? Yes, yes, sure, sure. I was thinking, how do I unmute? Then okay. I can't be found. Okay, it. okay, yeah. no worries. Okay. And Kajal, what about, oh. Uh, who is speaking right now? Is it Nikita? Nikita. Okay. Okay. Kajal, what about you? Am I audible to you, Kajal? Okay. Not sure. Okay. Anyway, Trace. Uh, so guys, we can just uh, get started with the session. I'm just gonna share my screen from my side. But before that, uh, Nikita, can you tell me about yourself as to you know uh, as to you know whether you've uh, like. Begin, begin watching the sessions or are you done with it or what what exactly is the status as of now can you uh, please tell me that okay um so first of all i didn't catch your name uh is it vishnu vijay uh, if i got it right yeah as per the email yeah exactly right mm -hmm. okay okay uh so vishnu sir basically uh i am doing audit assurance on my own Mm -hmm. So I have BPP kit as of now, the revision kit and the uh, workbook, both of them. Okay, okay. So okay. I am actually mm -hmm. looking forward for the session to get some guidance on as to how I can uh, prepare well for audit assurance mm -hmm. uh, and clear my exams. Okay, okay, sure. I can uh, guide you to that, no worries. Uh, and Kajal, feel free to, uh, uh, you know, comment on the chat section if you are unable to you know speak up uh, through your audio so yeah okay i'll just share my screen and let's get uh, started with the session <clears throat> let me know when the screen is visible yes it's visible okay so speaking about the audit and assurance paper, it's kind of different from all the other skill level papers that you may have attended in the attempted in the past. So uh, Nikita, in your in your case, uh, you know, have you attempted all the other papers as well? Uh, no, so I'll be attempting my FR exam as well as audit assurance in December. Okay. And these are like your first papers, right? Uh, yes, actually, I attended mm -hmm. FR. Uh, like two attempts back, uh, but mm -hmm. I couldn't clear it because of uh, technical issues at the center. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like my laptop, or this thing, uh, keyboard got stuck like five to six times. So that like wasted a oh. lot of time during my exam. So mm -hmm. I couldn't like whatever I used to write used to get erased uh, in the C section. So are you, that are you like a are you like a working professional or a full time student? Uh yes yes. So I work with KPMG. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. In audit and assurance, but uh, as of now, my profile from the past, uh, I think, say from April onwards, has been more of uh, data analytics. So, mm -hmm. like, I'm losing a little bit of touch of audit. So, okay. that is the reason I want to clear it ASAP so that, mm -hmm. you know, I can move forward with the rest of the papers. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, data analytics. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, we are we are introducing like even in you know ECCS subjects as well. They are introducing like data analytics related topics and you know various procedures in relation to that as well. But uh, yeah, primarily we would be you know learning about the basics of auditing in this particular paper at at the skill level as of now. So when it okay. comes to the audit and assurance paper, it's only slightly different from all the other uh, you know, uh, skill level papers of ACCA. Because in the other papers, you could see that majorly around like 60 marks would be available for writing the MCQs, right? However, when it comes to the audit and assurance paper, 70 marks are for like uh, are they are, are for like scenario based questions rather than MCQs? Only thirty marks will be available for the MCQ aspect of the exam. That's that's the primary difference when it comes to uh, AA when compared to the other skill level papers. Now, when it comes to the audit and assurance paper, there's a one primary thing that you have to understand here is that uh, you may have heard like uh, people saying or you know uh, you may me have looked at some of the resources available in the market and uh, thought that you know this might this is a, a paper of a theoretical nature however that's not necessarily the case yes there are like direct theory questions being asked in the exam but this is uh, this is like primarily in relation to uh, i would say 
uh, you know, maybe, maybe four or five marks. That's that's basically all you can get with the direct theory question that that is asked in the exam. But uh, for uh, for a major portion of the exam, the uh, questions are more of a practical nature, and I believe that's that's the case in you know all of the uh, I would say ACCA paper as well. There there there's no such thing as a you know theory paper here. It's all about uh, you know attempting a pra or uh, considering a practical scenario and providing your answer, or providing the actions that you would take as an auditor or as a uh, let's say management accountant or financial accountant in that particular scenario. So that's that's basically the case here. So uh, let's just uh, you know avoid the mis uh, just uh, I would say. Uh, let's just avoid that misconception that this is a theory paper. It's not. It's a practical paper, uh, majorly. So, so when it comes to the Audit and Ashwin's exam, uh, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind. One, we shouldn't expect or we shouldn't try to question spot. Question spot is basically, uh, you know, expecting what can come up in the exam. I can tell you that there are a few questions such as, you know, there are questions in relation to audit risk or internal controls or uh, substantive procedures that are like definite in the exam. We don't know the scenario or anything, or we don't know what exactly the case study would be. However, we can expect these kinds of questions to come up in the exam, but that's not the only thing that's asked in the exam. In the exam, questions can be asked from any area of the syllabus, right? So we can't necessarily predict as to what area will be tested specifically, which is why we have to be prepared for everything. So coverage of 100% of the syllabus is really mandatory when uh, you know studying for this particular paper. So don't try to question support, don't try to you know conduct a trend analysis by taking a look at the previous papers and uh, you know analyzing what can be you know asked in the upcoming session or anything like that. Just uh, you know, just cover everything, understand the audit and insurance concepts and then attend the exam. That's that's basically something that I would advise as well. So uh, just to give you an introduction as to what this paper is, that's that's basically it. Now let's take a look at the syllabus of audit and assurance. So when it comes to the audit and assurance exam, there are like six syllabus areas primarily. Uh, and I would say for the technical part of it, I would say there are like, uh, you know, five uh, five syllabus areas. The last one is kind of a, you know, skill. That's that's basically all there is to it. Now, uh, I will get there. But uh, first of all, let's discuss syllabus part A. Syllabus part A is basically all about audit uh, framework and regulation. And this is where we uh, primarily, uh, we primarily focus on the basics aspects of auditing and we learn as to what audit is, what audit and assurance, what assurance engagements are, or, uh, you know, what are the types of assurance engagements, what are the regulations that we have to follow as auditors in the industry. All these things will come under this particular syllabus area. It's just the basics. That's, that's basically all there is uh, to it. And then there is syllabus part B, and this is where we cover uh, planning and risk assessment. Now, Audit is not exactly, uh, I would say, uh, you know, a single term or it, it, it's not necessarily something like of a, you know, a one man job. It's, it's a teamwork that we do. Uh, or in other words, it's, it's, a, it's an entire process that we do, isn't it? So for that process, there are various stages to it. Like initially, the first stage would be the planning stage. We plan the audit and then we conduct some risk assessment activities. We conduct our procedures or whatever we have planned, we execute the audit, and then we conduct the review of the audit work that has been conducted. So these are like the phases of audit. There is the planning phase, there is the execution phase, and then there is the uh, review or reporting phase as well. So the syllabus area of audit is actually structured into these phases of audit. For, ex uh, for example, as you can see here, part B focuses on the planning aspect of audit and risk assessment aspect as well. So in syllabus part B, we learn about, uh, you know, what audit planning is and uh, as well as the, you know, audit risk related aspects as well. But more and about that, there are some ISA standards in relation to, to the planning phase that we focus on as well. So all these things will be covered under this particular syllabus area. 
And then we move on to part C, which is internal control. And internal control is uh, basically the controls that we have in place within an organization to prevent and detect fraud or activities. That's that's basically the basic definition. Uh, and if you're someone who has uh, you know watched our sessions, you may have uh, already understood that. Now, uh, when it comes to internal controls, this is yet again a really crucial area because in your exam, there can be questions uh, like case study questions with a I would say maybe you know uh, ten to 16 marks or 15 marks depends on the examiner but uh yeah a major major portion of the marks could be tested through a uh, internal control question so what can be asked in the exam is in your exam you would be provided with a scenario and what you would have to do is you would have to assess the scenario consider the scenario learn about it and then you will have to point out the deficiencies internal control deficiencies from the scenario you will have to provide recommendation of certain controls and you may have to conduct some test of controls as well. So that, that's the kind of question that can be asked from this particular syllabus area. And then there are a lot of other uh, standards as well. Now, uh, for someone who is experienced with the you know, audit industry, it would be a bit, a bit easier for them. Even if you are not, that's fine because you know we are you know covering everything throughout our you know video lectures and video sessions, so there's no problem in that. And of course, uh, we we have the video question marathon, uh, you know, or as we call it, the double A revision bootcamp. Now, this is a separate uh, thing uh, thing that we uh, uh, you know provide our students with. So, in this particular revision bootcamp, we have like. Uh, primarily uh, an entire revision with you. Like, uh, you know, since if you are like studying on your own or uh, I've uh, heard Nikda, right? Yeah, Nikda has, you know, uh, told us that uh, she's studying on her own. So uh, if there are like self-study students and if you are, you know, more focused on the question aspect of things or how to tackle questions in the exam, then the double revision bootcamp would be more, uh, you know, now you, you would be more attracted to the, you know, revision bootcamp rather than the full course itself. So when it comes to the double revision bootcamp, we have like two things, uh, you know, over there. First of all, there's a revision video of the, uh, of the key examinable areas. And then there are some questions that we practice as well. And these questions are like exam standard questions as well as past paper questions, which we practice uh, in the CBE environment as well, so that you can get a better understanding as to, you know, what are the exam tips and tricks that you can use and, you know, how to tackle the questions efficiently and effectively in the CBE environment, etc. All these things will be covered in that. So yeah, do check that out, uh, you know, if you're interested in that. Now, moving on. Uh, so in internal controls, basically, you know, the entire syllabus area is in relation to internal controls and a few standards in relation to that as well. And then we also have part D where we talk about audit evidence. Now, when it comes to audit evidence, now this is a really, I would say, uh, this is the biggest, uh, I would say, syllabus area compared to the others. Now, here we focus on the execution phase of the audit. We, we talk about substantive procedures. We talk about analytical procedures or test of details and uh, things like that. And of course, there are several other uh, audit standards that you learn uh, within a lot of interesting audit standards uh, that you learn in this particular syllabus area. And then we move on to the final stage of audit that is review and reporting. And that's what part E is all about. We look at the you know, re reporting aspects, review aspects. There are some you know final audit standards that we have to consider as part of review uh, and, uh, you know, such as subsequent events, or uh, you can also, uh, you can also talk about, uh, you will also learn about the, uh, primarily you will be learning about the audit opinion. How do we provide the audit opinion or, or what is the basis of providing an audit opinion in a particular scenario? Uh, if, or if there's any, let's say, accounting mistakes or accounting errors or, or a material misstatement in your financial statements, then what kind of an opinion do you provide? Why do you provide it? And uh, you know how do you how how do you prepare the or how would the auditor's report look like? All these things are covered under this particular syllabus area. And then finally, we have part F as well. Now, this is something that you know most students are a bit curious about as well. So, when it comes to part F of the uh, syllabus, it's basically a uh, uh, it's basically employability and technology skills. These are some basic knowledge, technology related knowledge that you need to have in order to attempt the CBE environment and to become, of course, employable in the industry as well. That's that's basically all there is to it. It's kind of an easy thing. Uh, uh, there's no 
technical knowledge that you have to learn here. It's just some basic spreadsheet skills or, uh, or you know, word skills. That that's basically all there is to it. Uh, and there's no, you know, there's nothing extra that you have to learn here. We are, you know, uh, within the uh, you know revision bootcamp itself, uh, we are when practicing questions. I have demonstrated a few, uh, you know, tips and tricks tricks that you can use to present your answer in a bit more efficient manner, right? So that you can just, uh, you know, adapt that. Uh, and that that particular skill is what they are asking for when it comes to part F. So there's no technical knowledge here, just the skill. And the skill is basically something that you developed while practicing the questions within either the CBE environment, within the, you know, ECCA practice platform, or uh, within the, uh, or, or using things like MS Excel or MS Word, that's, that's basically fine as well. So yeah, that's basically to just to give you a brief idea as to what the entire syllabus of uh, origin students is all about. Now, moving on to the exam structure. So when it comes to the uh, exam structure, we have a three-hour exam. We know that uh, you know uh, origin students, just like the other papers, other skill level papers, it's a three-hour exam, and. Uh, the exam structure is a bit different, though, when compared to other skill level papers, because in section A, we have three OTQs or objective test questions. And OTQs are basically uh, kind of like the section B questions that you may have seen in the other skill level papers. That's that's basically all there is to it. Uh, so you will be given a scenario and five MCQs in relation to that. So each OTQ will carry 10 marks. And we have three OTQs that gives us a total of 30 marks. Okay, folks, so only 30 marks will be available for uh, MCQs. And then we have section B as well. <clears throat> so in section B, now this is this is where majority of the marks are available in. And uh, here we have three questions. There is one 30 mark question or 30 mark case study question. And then there are two 20 mark case study question as well. Now, uh, so that gives us a total of 70 marks, isn't it? So primarily, as I you know mentioned uh, earlier as well, uh, you make you may expect things like or you may expect these case study questions to be audit risk questions or internal control deficiency question, substantive procedures, etc. Uh, however, we cannot exactly predict as to what it could be, and there could be some you know direct theory question that can be tested as well, which could be asked from any syllabus area, isn't it? So we cannot necessarily question support here. So therefore, it's really mandatory that you learn 100% of the syllabus. So uh, keep this in mind. <clears throat> now, so that's basically the exam structure for audit and assurance. Moving on to the time allocation, because uh, a common, a common, I would say, feedback on the audit and assurance paper is that most students don't have the or don't get the necessary time in order to complete this exam, so that's a common, you know, feedback that we uh, that uh, that students, uh, you know, ask me. So uh, what I used to tell them is, is that what you can do here is you can just, you know, plan on a time strategy. That's that's basically it's it's a simple solution. You just have to, you know, think of a time strategy when writing the exam. That's basically it. Now uh, let's plan that time strategy when it comes to the, this exam, shall we? So when it comes to AA, now there's usually an ACC recommendation that you need to take like 1.8 minutes per mark. But I believe that this is a bit too generous because, uh, you know, of course we could uh, take some, if, if we are like targeting 1.8 minutes per mark, then chances are, you know, uh, we may not take, make it because, you know, sometimes we may, uh, may, may take like you know, one or two minutes extra for some questions. And that could be problematic because at the end of the day or at the end of the uh, exam, we may miss out on some questions or, uh, you know, maybe some MCQs or maybe the, uh, you know, last, uh, I would say the last case study, 20 mark case study questions, etc. So a conservative approach that you can adopt here is basically to use 1.8 minutes, sorry, 1.5 minutes per mark. Now, why do I say this? Well, if I use 1.5 minutes per mark, then I would have a buffer time of six minutes, around six minutes, I would say. So this six minutes can be utilized in a different manner. So what we can do is we can utilize this six minutes in order to, uh, in order to get the, or in order to write the, or in order to focus on the area which can get us more marks. Can I utilize the six minutes to write some, you know, points in the case study question, or should I tackle the, uh, you know, uh, MCQ? So wh whichever, you know, whichever uh, 
point can uh, whichever uh, method can get you the most marks you can you know choose that right so that's basically why uh, i would say just use a conservative approach of 1.5 minutes per mark just so that you can have that buffer time to complete your exam so yeah now moving on to uh, a bit more detail when it comes to the time strategy so as per the 1.5 minutes per mark strategy, you will have to complete your section A by 45 minutes. So 45 minutes should be your target and you have to strictly follow this uh, time strategy as well. Otherwise, you know, you, you can, you know, it could be a bit messed up and you may miss out on some questions. So uh, strictly follow the time strategy, take 50, 45 minutes to complete section A and then move on to section B. Now in section B, for, this is a case study question, isn't it? So for the case study questions, you will have to divide the time into two phases. There should be a reading and planning time, and then there should be the writing time. Now, what do we do in reading and planning? We know what we do in writing. Of course, we write the answer. That's basically it, isn't it? However, when it comes to the reading and planning aspect, what we do is, first of all, we read the scenario. Sorry, we read the requirement of that particular question. And then we, you know, this is just to understand as to what exactly the question requires us to do, isn't it? Now, after reading the scenario, reading the requirement, first of all, then we move on to the scenario. So now what we do is we are understanding what the question is all about or what the practical scenario is, isn't it? So, and after that, what we can do is we can also, uh, you know, plan a structure for our answer as well. Now, this is a really key important area. Why exactly is that? Because when you are, let's say, let's say that you're attempting an audit risk question in the exam, you may be required to provide maybe, let's say, six audit risks in your answer. But you may have identified 10 audit risks from the scenario. So just take some time to assess which is the, you know, which is a really good uh, you know, audit risk that you can write, or which is the uh, which are the six audit risks out of these ten, which uh, which can guarantee you the marks. So you can just you know plan the structure. Or take a few minutes. Take these nine minutes for the thirty mark question, and seven minutes for the twenty mark question. You know to plan that particular aspect, and then start writing your answer. Now this can improve your you know speed of writing. Otherwise, you will have to you know write something and then think of something and then write again and think of something. Now that that that's, that's a really time consuming process and that's quite of an uh, quite kind of an inefficient process as well. So just uh, allot some time to read and plan and then write your answer. So you can use this uh, you know time strategy when it comes to your actual exam as well. And the reason why I'm telling you this and uh, the reason why I'm not uh, you know, providing you with this time strategy close to the exam is because uh, is is because you have to become compatible with this, right? You can't just uh, you know think of a time strategy a few days before the exam and expect to expect that to work when it comes to the actual exam, right? So when practicing questions, try to follow this time strategy. Try to practice timed question using the strategy so that you can become a bit more comfortable when uh, when tackling the answers uh, in the actual exam. Okay, so that's basically uh, something that I wanted to convey as well. So remember, guys, section A, 45 minutes. Uh, for the 30 mark question, we take nine minutes to read and plan and then 45 minutes to write it. And for the 20 mark questions, two, there are two 20 mark uh, questions, isn't it? So for each of the 20 mark questions, okay, folks, not for the you know entire uh, two questions, just for each of the 20 mark questions, take seven minutes to read and plan and then 30 minutes to write your answer. So uh, any questions up until now? Anyone? <clears throat> I see Bhumika and Manveer joined in. Hi, guys. Uh, good to meet you live. Hello, sir. So do you guys have any questions up until now? Nikita, what about you? No questions. OK. Bhumika? <clears throat> no, sir. Manveer? Not yet, sir. Okay. So Manmi, can you like briefly uh you know tell me about yourself? Because I haven't, you know, necessarily met you, I uh, met any of you, you know, in a live session. So can you just give give us a brief introduction about yourself? <clears throat> like uh, you know, what is the status as of now? Have you like uh you know completed watching watching all the video lectures or where 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 are you from? What do you do? Are you a full time student or a working professional, etc.? Something like that. You can go ahead, Manvir, first of all. Uh, sir, my name is Manveer Singh and uh, I just completed my graduation. 
uh, okay. last month and uh, uh, until now i have completed six acca papers and, oh great uh, uh, and sir so currently i'm watching almost and i mean part b right now okay okay sure and uh, are you a working professional or a full time student uh, full time student sir full time student okay great good to know bhumika what about you <clears throat> i am full time student sir okay and uh, uh, what is what is your status of the video lectures are you are you someone who purchased the videos or yes sir i have okay. completed okay okay great good and where are you based out of bhumika i'm from mp kajrod okay okay that's that's good to know uh so guys uh since you don't have any questions up until now let's uh, move forward to the next aspect so now we have uh the how to prepare aspect so when it comes to how to prepare for the exam now this is a step by step process now uh, the first step is to learn the syllabus and when i say learn the syllabus i mean 100% of the syllabus and then revise it continuously because of course uh we're all humans and we may tend to you know forget things uh so sometimes you know uh it's it's really difficult to just learn something on october and remember that in december or remember that in uh, you know november or the end of november etc isn't it so it's really necessary that you try to you know completely learn or just you know research on the syllabus if you want to just deep dive in and learn 100% of it and then revision is also important okay folks so keep on revising the syllabus on a daily basis if that's possible till the day of your exam so that's something that i would uh, highly recommend as well so learn the 100% of the syllabus and revise it continuously allow maybe like uh, an hour and a half or one hour or even two hours if possible just to revise through the entire syllabus on a daily basis so that you don't you know forget anything so yeah that's basically something that's really important and step 2 is to practice practice and practice now this is yet again a really crucial thing because uh, it's not just about learning the technical knowledge of the syllabus but it's also really necessary for you to uh, practice Or, or 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 develop the skill of applying that knowledge into practical scenarios so keep on practicing a lot of questions okay folks just uh you know there are various resources available to us there is of course the you know fintram re fintram resources such as the revision boot camp as well as you provided with the question marathon and things like that and of course there is the uh you know licensed uh question banks such as exam kits right from bpp or kaplan as well so just practice all of those if possible uh because there's no uh, i i'm not going to restrict you to just you know stick with the you know fintram resources alone or the uh you know uh the bpp or kaplan resources or wherever wherever you like uh if you can get any like good questions from other resources as well then you can practice those as well okay folks so keep on practicing a lot of questions till the day of your exam and when i say practice i mean you know it's not just about you know don't audit the questions or don't just you know read through the questions or answers itself and move on just try to you know type in your answers within the uh, you know within your ages laptop so that you can get the hang of typing in your answers in the exam as well okay folks so this that's a really important skill that you need to develop as well okay folks so keep on practicing and when i say practice i mean you know practicing it in the cbe environment okay folks so keep keep this in mind now Moving on to the next aspect, we have step three. That is to do the past papers. Question papers are basically the uh, uh, well, basically the past papers. Now, the past paper questions are available within your ACCA's website. Uh, you can just uh, you know take that from the study support resources as well. It's it's always available there, so you can just uh, you know go ahead uh, and download those. Uh, and of course, there's also you know some questions from. official is the official resources for double a available within the cbe practice platform as well okay folks so you can just have a look at those but past paper questions are something that i would recommend that you should focus on maybe a few weeks close to the exam okay folks not not right now or not by the end of this month or anything maybe uh, you know the second half of november or so you can just you know focus on these uh, past paper during that time just to get that uh, you know exam feeler and just to just to make sure that just to give yourself a confidence that you can uh you know attempt uh you know whatever that the examiner can throw at you so yeah that's something that i would uh, advise 
or maybe just focus on, on you know, a few weeks uh, or first half or second half of November. That's that's basically something that I would recommend. So, yeah. <clears throat> now, moving on to the next aspect, uh, and this is a really, uh, really useful resource when it comes to students uh, who are preparing for their exams as well. That is basically the examiner's report. Uh, I'm not sure whether you have referred to these uh, you know, for your other exams as well. But it's a really, really great resource, especially when it comes to uh, the, uh, especially when it comes to this paper as well, because you are writing a lot of subjective things as well, isn't it? So you sometimes you might be doubtful as to whether the point that you've written in the answer is correct or not. So what you can do is you can take a look at the, like whenever you're attempting a particular past paper, you can read the examiner's report in relation to that particular past paper. Now, why are we doing this? This is so that you can get an understanding as to what the examiner expects or what is the examiner's expectation? What has the strong candidates in the exam done in that particular exam setting? Or what have the poor candidates done in the exam setting? By having this understanding, you would be able to get an idea as to what kind of questions, sorry, what are the expectations that the examiners will have uh, for, a, for a AA exam candidate? So that's a really useful resource that you can refer to as well. And uh, the fifth step is basically to attempt a mock exam. And uh, as you know, we do provide a mock exam and uh, your mock exams will be, uh, I will be providing you with the mock exams, uh, you know, sometime around November, by mid-November, most probably. Uh, and uh, for the mock exams, the it's not about you know what kind of a uh, uh, question that you're attempting when it comes to the mock exams. It's more about how you're handling it. So when you're attempting a mock exam, write it under exam conditions, and of course, write it in a timed manner so that I can give you a, a bit more feedback or a personalized feedback as to you know how what are the areas of your improvement or what all things should you improve in, etc. Right. So that's basically uh, something that we provide as well. We provide like personalized feedback, individual feedback when it comes to the mock exams. And uh, this time I am expecting to conduct this mock exam around maybe mid of November. So I would recommend all of you folks to be prepared by then as well so that, you know, you can you can, uh, you know, attempt the mock exams just like how you would attempt an actual exam so that I can give you a bit more you know useful feedback. So, yeah, there's that as well. And finally, step six is to just go and write your exam. That's that's basically all there is to it. Now, these six steps are really crucial. So let me just explain the importance here. How many of you know how to? Uh, how do? You, uh, how many of you know origami? Does anyone know origami? Like making a paper plane or like a swan, as shown uh, as shown in this particular picture. Bumika, what about you? Do you know what all things do you know to make in a piece of paper? Uh, are you there, Bumika? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, have you heard the question? Sir, can you please repeat? Okay. I'm asking you, uh, you know, what all things do you know to, you know, make in a piece of paper? Simple question. A flower. A flower. Oh, that's that's interesting. Okay. Uh, okay. What, Manmir, what, what about you? Just an airplane, sir. Just an airplane. Okay. Uh, Nikita, what about you? Yeah, same airplane. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, Bumika, flower is really interesting. Okay, so I can, I can uh, tell you that. Like, is it using like the uh, you know, I, I personally know how to make a you know rose out of a tissue paper. So is it something like that or <laughs> Bumika or? Yes, sir. Maybe. Some okay. Okay. Same. Great. 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 That's that's good to know. I really like origami. I do you know make like planes, boats, etc. So even this one as well. So uh, even the fan also. Even the fan, fan, fan. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's that's actually kind of cool. Uh, basket so, also. Mm -hmm. Oh, basket. Great. Great. Okay. So this is not a. This is like turning into a competition, isn't it? So, okay. Uh, it's really great that you guys uh you know know all these stuff. So, guys, the ideal thing uh that I want to convey here is that whenever you are making you know let's say let's take a plane for example, there's a step by step process to it, isn't it? You fold the paper in a step by step method. Now, what would happen if you miss out one step? Will you get the end result that is the paper plane? Bumika? 
or when we who, who are is capable of answering if you if you miss out on a particular step will you get the you know end result that is that particular paper plane or boat or you know whatever you're preparing no sir no right so that is exactly how important these steps are as well if you miss out on one then i cannot guarantee the end result that is you know passing passing with flying colors in the you know double a exam so it's really necessary for you guys to you know follow these steps each of these steps one by one right uh, don't miss out on practicing the past paper i'm i'm definitely sure that you won't do that uh, so uh, i'm a bit doubt doubtful regarding the practice aspect so try to practice as much as uh, possible the you, you can use the you know bpp or exam kit uh, you know bpp or what was the other one yeah kaplan exam kit uh, or uh, and and of course there is the fintram resources as well keep on you know rewatching the videos rewatching the revision video or uh, the uh, you know some interesting question that you may you may have found difficult as well that's that's really necessary keep on practicing everything and of course Learn one hundred percent of the syllabus, guys. Okay, folks, don't don't miss out on anything. Don't uh, you know? Uh, if you find some topics or anything difficult, then feel free to contact me. You guys have my WhatsApp number, so just uh, you know, shoot your question, and I will uh, you know respond to that as soon as possible. So yeah, that's that's basically something that we uh, that that I wanted to convey as well. So yeah. <clears throat> All right, folks. So that's basically as the how to prepare aspect. Now moving on to how to plan for your upcoming exam aspect. So up until now, do you guys have any questions? Just one question: that uh, when is the boot camp and the question marathon that uh, you were talking about? Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. So see, Nikita, at Fintram, what we do is we provide two sets of resources. One is the full course where you have all the video lectures of AA. and uh this also includes the you know revision boot camp as well the revision boot camp as i mentioned before it's basically a revision video of the key examinable areas of wa and of course uh there are the video question marathon as well where we where uh you know i demonstrate how to do some questions and uh, exam standard as well as past paper questions as well so this is what the full course includes now other than this we also have the revision boot camp alone as well we 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 provide that as a standalone product as well so you can check out the fintram website in order to get more details regarding the pricing and things but uh you know the contents are basically this within the revision boot camp double revision boot camp you can you know get the uh you know revision video and as well as the you know uh video lectures on question practice hope that you're clear with okay. it okay okay so sure. All right. Uh, so okay. Uh, now moving on to how to plan for your upcoming exam. Oh, but, um, okay. So uh, do you guys have any other questions? No, right? Manveer, Bhumika. No, sir. Okay. Great. Now, uh, moving on to the planning aspect. Let me just open the calendar once. <clears throat> Let me know when it's visible. Yes, it's possible. Okay. So as you can see here, guys, I have the calendar for the three months that we have left, isn't it? So our exam would most probably be on December fifth, I believe. Yeah. So you know what? I'm just gonna highlight it as there we go. So fifth is like the the D date, isn't it? So uh, what exactly or how exactly can we plan for this exam? Let's understand that first of all. So the approach that I usually follow and I usually recommend my students is to think backwards from the D date from the deadline. So this is something that's common when we are planning everything in corporates as well. So when it comes to corporate organizations, what do they do? They first of all set an objective, isn't it? And then they plan from the objective, isn't it? So that's exactly what we will be doing here as well. Now our objective is to. wonderfully prepare for the exam on uh, uh, conducted on 5th of december now if that is the case then i've already told you what all things you have to do here uh, now all that you have to do is to uh, so the first thing that we do is to set our objective what is our objective to pass the double exam and how do we do that by writing the exam wonderfully on the 5th of december now from that let's plan the rest of the things so the next thing that i have to do is to what what exactly is the next thing that i have to do anyone uh, can anyone contribute to the planning 
<clears throat> Bhumika, can you tell me what, what, what I need to do in order to prepare for the exam wonderfully? Just one or two steps is fine. Learn all the aspects. Learn everything, isn't it? So that's like the first thing that we do. Uh, the second thing is to practice questions. And after that, practice past paper questions. And after that, do a mock exam, isn't it? So I'm just going to reverse the steps once. So before attempting the exam, I need to do my mock exam. And I am planning to attempt the mock exam on, let's say, on 18th. I'm just, you know, planning a date. Uh, of course, the actual date will be, you know, communicated to you. So don't worry about that. Uh, <clears throat> so if I am attempting the uh, mock exam on 18th, what is the previous step uh, next to the mock exam? It was to practice read the examiner's report, and of course, practice uh, the past exam questions, isn't it? So from the, uh, of course, I do know that, you know, uh, one day before the exam, there's like, you know, there's a, a hardcore preparation going on, isn't it? So uh, I would be, you know, staying maybe a bit uh, late or something just to, you know, learn through everything and stuff like that. So I'm just going to allocate this day for that. So you know, hardcore preparation day, maybe fourth and even let's say, let's take Saturday as well, just to be on the safe side. And of course, uh, I could plan, uh, I'm just going to uh, keep these two days as buffer. So before attempting the mock exam, I will have to practice the past paper questions as well, isn't it? Past papers as well as, of course, the examiner's report as well. So I may allocate these days in order to do that, right? So this is how you need to plan things. Just just plan it from a on a on a on a backward basis. That's basically it. Set the objective and plan from over there. So uh, so these are basically the days on which I would practice the past paper questions. Well, we we may not that have this much uh, you know level of past papers. However, you know I can include the question practice aspect as well. Now uh, for the question practice aspect for the rest of the month of November, what I would do is I would allocate it to question practice right and maybe i would take the uh you know maybe the last week of october for the same thing as well and for the rest of the time that i have what would i do i would learn the syllabus and revise continuously isn't it well revision is like embedded on a daily basis till the day of your exam so setting that aside i would complete my syllabus learning aspect, or I would learn 100% of the syllabus till the 22nd, right? So this is how you need to plan things. Of course, the dates can be changed. It's it, You don't necessarily have to follow strictly, or you don't have to strictly follow this, uh, you know, uh, schedule on its own. Uh, this is just to give you an idea as to what all things uh, or how exactly can you provide the planning? For example, you may have your own personal commitments or work-related stuff or maybe a vacation, a short vacation or something. I would, you know, I, I, I would avoid everything that is avoidable, but, uh, you know, it depends upon you and your personal commitments as well. So, so just include all of these in your schedule and then prepare a plan. And after preparing the plan, what do you have to do? Do you just, you know, close the file, save save it somewhere and then, you know, uh, uh, mind your own business? No, not really, isn't it? So you have to go back and follow them, strictly follow it on a consistent manner. So that's basically how you plan for your upcoming exam. Set the objective, plan from over there. I've given you the idea, just create your own schedule now, right? Any questions? <clears throat> Bhumika, anything from your side? No, sir. Manveer, what about you? No, sir. Nikita? No, sir. Okay. All right. That's good to know. So another thing that, you know, that could possibly happen, I would say, uh, you know, God forbid, I would say, uh, is that you may plan things like these or you may create a calendar on your own. But, you know, uh, there are two words that I've provided here as a tab name here planning and consistency. So it's not just about planning and leaving it be. It's also about consistently following your plan as well, right? So keep yourself motivated and, uh, you know, make a, make a realistic plan as well. For example, you guys may, uh, you know what, that's something uh, that I'll have to add, as, add on as well, right? So I would like to know as to 
what is your plan regarding question practice or how much questions can you do per day? Let's let's answer that, shall we? Uh, so Nikita, can you uh, go ahead? Like uh, my question is how many questions, let's say, uh, let's take the MCQs and, uh, you know, case study questions separately. So how many, if you're only focusing on MCQs, then how many MCQs will you do per day? And how many, uh, you know, uh, case study questions can you do per day? Can you tell me that? <clears throat> Not sure on the exact number, but just an approximation could be sure, that's somewhere around, uh, I think, six or seven or eight, depending upon the workload of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, oh, how many hours I can take out, depending on that, uh, maybe six to eight of MCQs I can do. Oh, you're, a, you're a working professional, right? So, uh, right, right, right. On, I'm, so this is on weekends, I believe, right? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So weekends, I can take out extra time and mm -hmm. uh, put right, in some exactly. extra. Uh, yeah. And what about on a working day? Working days, I can take out probably one, one and a half hour. And on a weekend, I can take no, no, out no, more no, no, time. No, no. See, uh, see uh, let me tell you about my approach when, when it comes to planning for your studies. So I am more towards an output-oriented approach. So I don't focus on the hours that I spend, but rather have I, have I, have I, you know, completed the output or how many questions have I done? So I'm, I'm a bit more output oriented. So I, I would also recommend you guys to be output oriented as well, because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, not many people care about our inputs, right? So uh, it's, it's, it's really great uh, if you could, if you guys could focus on the output as to what exactly have you done. That's like, that's like a really good advice when it comes to the corporate as well. Everyone is more, you know, focused on the output rather than the input. So uh, yeah, anyway, ways. So my point here is uh, on a, on a, on a, on a typical working day, how many hours, or how many questions, like case study questions do you think you could, uh, you know, do? And I would give you an idea here. Uh, I would say a 30 mark question can take around, it's it's 45 minutes or so, right? I would say uh, an hour and a half for a, a 30, uh, 30 mark question. And for 20 mark questions, it would be 45 to one hour. So that's, that's the approximate time that you could take uh, for learning a particular question or by practicing, of course. So uh, how, how much do you think can you allocate? <clears throat> Uh, have I con confused you or anything like that, or slightly? Uh, okay. I think one hour for um, mm -hmm. the thirty mark question. So maybe one question we can cover mm -hmm. for, on a working for thirty day. marks mm -hmm. on a working day, and twenty marks we can cover uh, approximately three four questions if we give one one and a half hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That's that's actually a bit low because I I would at least try to take out or you you know if you're going on an hourly basis I would say you know maybe target maybe four questions that's that's basically something that I would recommend maybe take out try to take out four hours from your day you know to practice these questions or a bare minimum would be two but you know one question is a bit low I would say a one. Or yeah, two max. Two max is even low as well. Maybe target two to three or two, three or four questions on a working day. That's basically something that I would advise for case study questions. What about MCQs? On a on a you know weekend, that's that's fine if you can, you know, tell me that. I think maybe 18 or 20 we can because uh, MCQs we can do in one flow and we can, you know, do it faster. Like once we've understood. 18 or 20 MCQs on a weekend. Like you're talking about MCQs, right? On a on a weekend, like on a holiday, like, you know, you have where you have extra yeah. hours. So I, I would target around maybe 60, right? Because, uh, you know, See, as a working professional, I do understand that you don't have the, you know, you don't have much time to devote. That's that's something that even I understand as well, because I myself am an, am a working professional too. And, you know, I have been, you know, uh, there are like research and learnings that I do myself as well. So uh, 
I do understand that you know it's really difficult to take out uh, you know four uh, like four hours from a uh, from a working day. But you know since you are like learning for a professional qualification, I would say you know you have to you know push yourself a bit more. Uh, that's that's something that I would uh, recommend to you as well uh, as a working professional. So uh, yeah, so maybe at a bare minimum of two hours, try to take out two hours from your day. And on weekends, uh, you know, the target should be, I'm just providing you with a target here. Uh, try to, you know, uh, you know, practicing like eight question, eight scenario based question is totally fine. Uh, but when it comes to MCQs, target like 60. That's That should be the, you know, total target for one day. That's something that I would advise. Not just for, uh, that's this particular target is not just for AA, but also for, you know, you know your other skill level papers as well, just to give you an idea. <clears throat> so on right? a typical work day, if you can just repeat it once more. Oh, like working for day. A, okay, okay. Yeah. On a working day, I would, I would recommend maybe, uh, you know, two to four case, case study questions and 20 MCQs on a working day would be fine. Right? Okay. On a on a weekend, like this is for the full time students here as well. So on a full day, when 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 the full day is available to you, I would go for maybe eight case study questions and uh, or or sixty MCQs, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Nikita, any confusion? No, it's fine, sir. Okay. So section okay, A and great. section B, we can do it. We can divide it, and we can do. It. Yeah, we can. You can divide it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so guys, that's that's basically all I wanted to cover in this particular session. So, do you guys have any other questions that you want to ask? Uh, sir, when we are self-assessing our um, our output, so uh, what is the best approach to do that? Self-assessing, as in, uh, you want to know how to like when you're practicing a question, you want yes, to sir. know. Uh, how the as to whether your answer is correct or not. Just compare yes. it with the you know answer provided. Like uh, if you're talking about the FinTram resource, then you can just take a look at you know the answer that I've provided to you as well. Or uh, if you're practicing, let's say the BPP or Kaplan kits, then just refer to the just compare the answers. That's that's basically it. Uh, and of course, if you are doubtful regarding maybe some points like some answers that you may have written which is not provided in the Kaplan kit you can just send it to me and I can you know uh, tell you as to whether it's right or not so yeah that's that's basically another option okay thank you sir. okay uh, so would you recommend BVP or Kaplan for AA Oh, for every time, if I would get yes. like, uh, you know, a rupee for every student who asked me that question, I would be a millionaire, I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, so when it comes to, see, it's it's not a matter of comparison, I can tell you that, because uh, there are a variety of, when it comes to the AA paper, there are a variety of questions in both of these exam kits. So I would recommend maybe, if if possible, I would recommend practicing both. Right, but understanding that you're a full-time professional, you can just choose anyone. That's that's totally fine. But for a normal full-time student, I usually just uh, you know ask them to practice both of uh, both of the exam kits. And when practicing both of them, guys, uh, what I would suggest is it's just a suggestion. You can follow it if you want as well. Uh, when it comes to the exam kits, uh, in the section B questions, as in in our case, uh, in the for the AA scenario, in the AA scenario for the case study questions, in these exam kits, there would be some questions marked as past paper questions. Like this could be past paper, like amended versions of the past paper questions from maybe 2010, 2013, depends, right? We don't know. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the year as of now, but uh, yeah, there could be you know questions marked as or scenario. I'm talking about the scenario question, not the MCQs. For these scenario questions marked as past paper questions, I would suggest just practicing those. Avoid the other ones because those are like too easy and I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. So just practice the, for the section B questions, for the scenario based question, just practice the uh, past paper questions marked within your exam kits. That's something that I would suggest. And that could, you know, uh, save a lot of time uh, it, uh, for the limited time that you have as of now as well. So, yeah. Is that clear, guys, or any confusion over there? Nick, Nick did you get what I mean? <clears throat> yes, I got okay. it. Okay, great. All right, any other questions?
just one last question i have so um is there any particular uh, tips or tricks which you can suggest for double a or uh, for clearing the exam in terms of learning the double uh, a concepts and retaining them for a longer period well uh the only thing that you could do is to uh you know as i suggested earlier it, it just allocate some time for revision see uh it might be a bit difficult for you since you're a working professional maybe on weekdays it might be a bit difficult for you to uh you know allocate time for revision as well as question practice i can understand that but uh you know you can plan things accordingly for example for revision uh, i'm i'm not saying that you have to revise the entire syllabus on one day or or on every day what you could do is you you can perhaps uh, you know allocate maybe 15 minutes to revise the syllabus area a or the next day you can re syllabus, uh, revise syllabus area b on a continuous basis so on that basis you could uh, you know plan the revision aspect of it so revision is something that uh, that can help you graph the concepts or memorize the concepts in a in a bit more easier manner as well and uh, more and about that when it comes to the question practice aspect of it and this is something that i would recommend for everyone uh, guys what you could do is for MCQs, if you get some MCQs wrong, let's say that you have attempted an, a particular MCQ and you got it wrong, just mark it off, right? Uh, mark it off so that you can, uh, you know, you can do that very MCQ yet again, maybe close to the exam, just so that you can, you know, understand where you went wrong and you know how how you've improved, etc. So that's that's basically something that I would just mark off the you know things that went wrong for in, in the case of MCQs. And the same can be said for scenario-based questions as well. If you find a particular scenario question to be really difficult, just mark it off so that you can uh, you know try to attempt it a second time. Uh, maybe a few weeks before the exam so that that's that's still practice you're just trying to understand the areas of improvements right or uh, you you would be able to understand as to whether you have improved or not right so that's something that i would uh you know uh suggest as well mark off the wrong things and try to do it again so yeah <clears throat> anything else I, I hope that answers your question Nikta. yes it does yeah okay thanks Anything else? All right, guys, if that's all, then we can wind up the session. And uh, for if you have purchased the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Revision Bootcamp or full course, then I will see you in the next session. Uh, and for the others, well, uh, thank you for coming. And I hope this particular session was really fru fruitful for you as well. So guys, uh, if there is any sort of questions, then feel free to, uh, you know, contact me and ask me uh, regarding these things. I would be really happy to help you out uh, with whatever your whatever issues that you're facing. So yeah, thank you all. Thank you for attempting this session. And I will see you later in the next thank you. live session. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, you for welcome. the fruitful session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nikta. Bye.